Praise the Lord, everybody. You may be seated. So glad to see you. Coles become dear friends of ours. Uh, as, as your pastor has said, we are so appreciative of, of them and uh, what they are uh, in our lives and, and a source of encouragement. And um, so glad to see uh, Dana, Kenneth, and Pam. And uh, we have a one of our brothers from our church, Michael. So glad you were able to make it here tonight. I want to um, quickly go to the word of the Lord. And I will not uh, preach like Paul. Some would say, well, wouldn't you want to preach like Paul? Um, Paul was a very long-winded preacher. And on a Wednesday night, I know there's plenty of people who've been at work. And you've been tired. And I know um, if this were a second story or third story window we'd be in danger possibly if somebody falling asleep falling out the window but i hope you don't fall off your chair tonight i'll do my best i'll do my best to do my part to keep you awake um, but i i would pray the lord would come into this place and that god would um that god would speak to our hearts tonight i love the word of god i love the word of god Anybody with me? Do you love the Word of God? I just love the Word of God. Hallelujah. I've been to places where the Word of God is illegal, and it is so cherished to those who get a hold of it, and they hold it in secret. But we have it liberally, and we have it freely, amen, in this country. And while you have it, why don't you, why don't you get a hold of it and love the Word and get into it, amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 12. says, Now we have received not the spirit of the world. Somebody say spirit of the world. Yeah. We have not received the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Now we have received, I want, to, I want to just go over this again. There are two spirits here. We have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. There are two spirits. Today I want to, I want to talk about being connected to God and God connection. I know it sounds elementary. I know it sounds very basic building blocks, um, but I believe the very basic building blocks are some of the most profound words that we can hear and, and the most transformative as well. And so tonight, if you will, uh, if you will endeavor with me to take a journey through his word tonight, you may be seated. And uh, we will keep your Bibles handy, please. There are two spirits. You can either be connected to the spirit of this world, or you can be connected to the spirit which is from God. It's pretty simple, right? right. Two spirits. Right. How many spirits? Two. Two. You have the spirit of the world, and you have the spirit of God. Right. Very basic. And we can be connected to one, and if we're not connected to one, we're connected to the other. That's right. This is what we would call a binary condition in software development, that it's either a one or a zero. Can't be anything else. It's either true or it's false. Either, either you're, you're with one or you're with the other. I've said it many times that I have never seen anyone half skydive. I've never seen anyone hanging out of a plane, but by accident. You can't, you can't get the full experience without stepping out of the plane. Either you're in it or you're out. Right. Right. And can I say to you today that either you're connected to God or you're not. Either we're connected to the Spirit of God or we're connected to the Spirit of this world. You have a spirit. 
Your spirit is not the spirit of God, but you have a spirit. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 23. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 23. If you want to race me there in a sword drill, you'll probably beat me tonight. The Apostle Paul finishing up his, his letter to the Thessalonians. He says, And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. That means every part of you. Sanctify you wholly. Not H-O-L-Y, but W-H-O-L-L-Y. Entirely. I pray your whole spirit, your whole spirit and soul and body. Isn't that interesting? The apostle says that there are three parts of you. So you got two spirits that you could be connected to, and there's three parts of you. And in, in the right order, you have the spirit, you have the soul, and you have the body. Soul and spirit are tightly coupled in Scripture, but there's a division line between them. There's a delimiter between them. You will find that the spirit is that interface that, that can, can interface us back to God. And I can be regenerated in my spirit man. That spirit that I have allows me to receive the spirit of God or the spirit of this world. In fact, it is the entrance into my soul and to my body. It's vitally important that I make the right decisions with my soul and with my body so that I do not open up doors and gateways to the spirit of this world. And so I, I, I want to share with you tonight that whatever spirit you are connected to through your spirit, Paul said he would have that you would be whole in your spirit first and then your soul and then your body. Don't try the other way. Don't try to get to God through your body and then your emotions and will, intent and desires and appetites and then try and get that to this. You can't get good enough the other way. But God has made a way, amen, for us to receive his spirit through obedience. And so whatever spirit you're connected to will plant and bloom in a cascading fashion to your soul and then to your body. The fruit of the spirit, right? It's the fruit of the spirit that then, that then informs my soul. My soul is my attitude. You say, well, I thought I, thought I had... The Spirit of God in my soul. Well, the Spirit of God can touch your soul. Let's just let's just iron out a few of these details. Is that all right? You know why? You know why you need the Lord? Because you you have a soul and you have a bad attitude sometimes. I do too. Anybody have a bad attitude? Some some people just admit it right out. I got a bad attitude. They just say, I have it. Your desire and your intent is, is so valuable to whatever spirit you're connected to because it is that which controls this. You can pinch yourself. This! It's called your flesh, your body. So whoever controls your soul, whoever controls your desires, Whoever controls your will controls your body. And also baked into our body, Paul said it like this. He said, there is a war within my members and the flesh warreth against not the soul, but the flesh warreth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. Right in the middle, that flesh is saying, I want to do things that, that the spirit doesn't want to do. I've got needs. I've got things I've got to do. I've got places I've got to go. And the Spirit is, is informing the intent and the emotions and our, our soul and our will to move our bodies for the sake of the work of the kingdom. Yes. And so Paul even said it like this. There is a war between flesh and spirit and spirit and flesh. Let us let... Uh, 
Let us not think that we operate in the flesh. What we see in the flesh is usually informed, first of all, by the Spirit. A wise pastor told me one time, he said, if you're operating in the flesh and you're praying in the flesh and you're warring in the flesh, you're one step behind because it is feeling the after effects of what has already happened in the Spirit. Romans chapter 8, let's go there, familiar passage of Scripture. Romans chapter 8. Start with verse 5. It's all right for me to teach a little tonight. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. <coughs> they that are after the spirit do what? Do mind the the things of the Spirit. Right. They that are after the flesh will do the things of the flesh. They are connected to the Spirit of the world. Those that are connected to the Spirit will do the things of the Spirit. Now I want to show you, to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. If you are not connected to the spirit of Jesus, you're dead. Yeah, right. That's, right. that's what it says, right? Yeah. For me to be carnally minded brings about death, not only to my soul, but to my body. Yes. For me to be spiritually minded is life and peace. I don't know about you, but I want to be connected to the spirit that gives me life. Yes. Amen. Yes. I want to be connected to the spirit that brings life, not only in my spirit man, for I'm regenerated in my spirit man. Sanctification is happening in my soul. That's why we need the correction and the love of God to come in and, and move us and make us and, 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 and teach us and, and reprove us. And we need pastors and teachers with doctrine for uh, for correction, for reproof, right. for instruction in righteousness. Right. We need that because we're not perfect right. when, we are, when we are justified. Right. Right. We are regenerated in our spirit, man. That's why we can walk into the Holy of Holies. Yeah. Right. We can walk into the throne room of grace and make our petitions made uh, boldly. Amen? Because right. we're regenerated. Right. And certainly I'm not regenerated in my body yet. If I were regenerated in my body, I would, I'd have a beautiful mane of hair on my head. It would just, I could just do this. And it would just, I, I do that sometimes. You do that too, don't you? Yeah, he does that too. You, know, you do that too, right? You just kind of, you just imagine, you, you put a fan in front of your face and you just imagine. Let it blow and you'd have to have a microscope to see what's happening. But I'm not regenerated in my body. There's going to be a day, though. There's going to be a day. Me and I hope to meet that bald prophet who called down those two she bears out of the woods. You know that story. There's going to be a day, though. There won't be warts and wrinkles and disease. There's going to be a day when our bodies will, will, will find that resurrection power. And our bodies will be regenerated. Amen. We will see him as he is, but we don't have that now. Yes. Even that war within ourselves, our will and our desire, Jesus said, set your affections and, and look for he heavenly yes. treasure. Yes. Yes. Why, why do we need that if we've got the spirit? Because, because there is a part of us that is still imperfect, but we have the righteousness of God mm -hmm. upon us through the spirit. Right. So it's vital. No, you're not perfect. You're not perfect. You're not going to be. You're not going to be perfect. Your body's not going to be perfect. But, oh, you better get it right with the spirit. But get it right with the spirit. Hallelujah! And you can grow, and you can, you can, you can be sanctified, and and you can, you can uh, learn uh, what He wants you to do in your life by getting it right in the spirit first. I'm just going. Let's just make this plain. If it doesn't come spirit, soul, and body you're going to be on a treadmill or a hamster wheel. Anybody? 
<laughs> Anybody know what I'm talking about? I gotta watch the time here. You're gonna be running and not making any progress. Right. Oh, I've just gotta get good in my body. I gotta stop doing this. I gotta, I gotta cut this out, and you know, then the Lord will accept me. That's not how it works. Your body will never be rege regenerated right. on this earth. It's not, it's not gonna happen. You can't get to God through your body. Right. That's right. However, our body can worship the Lord. That's right. Our bodies can be members of righteousness. That's right. That's right. Can I tell you, you can't get to God through your soul even. You can't desire it enough and, and say, oh, I want God enough and just will it to be. You can't love God enough to get what you need to get to heaven. You can't love him enough. If we could love him enough, we wouldn't need the cross. Mm -hmm. I know this is some theology here, but that's, stick with me here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. if, you could, if you could have a good attitude enough to get to heaven, we wouldn't need Jesus, right? right. That's right. That's right. That's right. I can only get, I can only receive the Holy Ghost in my spirit, man. So why am I going first to counseling. I'm not against counseling. Why am I going first to try and figure out my feelings if I haven't connected to him in the spirit that would bring fruit of the spirit and peace and joy in my life? Yeah. Ooh, am, I, am I okay here? Yeah. All right. I'm, I don't know how to do anything but pastor. People. I don't want to step on toes. I told our church, I said, I don't want you coming to me with your problems unless first you pray about it. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. yeah. If you haven't connected in the spirit, there's not much I can do. The thing we're going to do is we're going to pray first. Yeah, that's right. Absolutely. And secondly, if you haven't gone to the word, which if you read John in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word what? was God. The word was made flesh and dwelt among us. We beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and what? Truth. He's full of truth. He's the way, the truth, the life. He is the living word. Yes. Yes. The spirit will lead us and guide us. If you haven't gone to the word, then guess what? I'm going to take you to the word. Yeah, right. Why? Because it tells us how we can connect in the spirit. That's right. Oh, when he has control in the spirit. Oh. Then, then our emotions can kind of iron out. I know people have been hurt. Listen, Jesus was hurt. That's yes. right. You want to talk about abuse? Jesus was abused. Oh, yes. You want to talk about pain? Jesus was in pain. I'm not diminishing anybody's pain. But I'm telling you, you can't, you can't get, get wholeness there in your life. I want you to be whole in your soul. Yes. I want you to be whole in your body. But first and foremost, I want you to be whole in your spirit, man, connected to the spirit yes. of God. Amen. Because if you're not connected to the spirit of God, then you're just going to be chasing your tail. Yes. How do I know this? I, I'm a human too. I'm a human being. Yes. Let's go on in verse 7. The carnal mind is enmity against God. It's not subject to the law of God, neither deed can it be. So they that are in the flesh cannot please God. If you're not connected to the Spirit of God, you cannot please God. That's right. If you're connected to the Spirit of the world, you cannot please God. Amen. But ye are not of the flesh, but in the Spirit. If so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. You're not of the flesh when the Spirit of God dwell in you. Well, I received the Holy Ghost. Well, have you prayed lately? Have you connected in the spirit? Have you prayed in the spirit? Have you operated in the spiritual gifts? Have you let the spirit fruit begin to grow? Are you connected to the vine? Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you through the spirit, the body is dead because of sin. But what, <laughs> like this, but the spirit is life 
because of righteousness. If we're not connected to the Spirit of God, we're dead. If we're not connected to the Spirit of God, we're dead. So I'm going to take up the rest of my time here. I, I, want, to, I want to make sure we have some time to pray. I want to, I want to just share with you a little burden that I had for Christians today. We've been, and I don't mean to, I don't mean to stomp on any sacred cows or any. Maybe I do, uh, but I don't mean to uh, even parse language and stuff here today. But in my own life, I stopped saying spiritual disciplines. I stopped saying the word discipline. The word discipline, I know it kind of sounds like disciple. You say, oh, I can't believe that pastor not doing spiritual disciplines. Spiritual disciplines, if you start looking into the word, it starts talking about routine and habits and, uh, and uh, a lot of times and, and, and essentially just a, a routine work and muscle memory when it talks about discipline. We have said so long that prayer is a spiritual discipline. That we have to learn to pray, and here's the word, more. Lord, help us to pray more. Have you ever said that before? How, how do we wrap this all up together? I think this is, if we want to connect to the Spirit, it has to be through prayer. Yes. Right. It has to be through the Word of God. Yes. Amen. And so, with this overlay of discipline on the very elementary building block of what will what got us to an altar that let us release our faith to him it wasn't a work of the flesh when you knelt at an altar it was a work of faith it wasn't a work of the flesh when you were baptized in the name of Jesus Christ it was a work of faith right. Right. when you received the spirit of god that wasn't a work of flesh because you had some physical animation or exertion. No, that wasn't a work of flesh. It was a work of faith. Yeah. Yes. That allowed the Spirit of God to come inside of you. And so that, that building block of spirit connection. He gave us that faith which can only go through our spirit man. Yeah. It's overlaid with this thing of discipline. You know what comes with discipline? If you miss the discipline, guilt. That word guilt is, is such a bad word for me. It's such a bad word. I don't like guilt. Anybody like guilt? My sons, do you guys like guilt? No. They said, no way, Dad. They don't want guilt from their daddy. I don't like guilt. Does guilt make you feel good? Whew, I'm so glad I feel guilty today. Yes. Anybody? feel guilty. Woo! It's a good day. I feel guilty. No. He said nobody. Ever. And when you feel guilty, does it make you more productive? Does it make you more efficient? No. It puts you into a hole. And does it make you want to go back and try the thing that has brought the guilt on in the first place? That's why some people, if they miss, if they miss a Sunday, it's easy to miss the next Sunday because they feel guilty about missing that Sunday, and, and it's yeah. harder to get back to the gathering because of the guilt of that one, and then it just snowballs to the point where you you feel like you can't get back. Right. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Let's talk about prayer. Mm -hmm. We talked we we talked about oh Lord, I wish I wish I could pray like some of those old mothers yeah. pray. Pray until something happens at 3 in the morning. I mean, that's kind of been in our hearts at some point. Lord, if I could just pray more. If I could just have a bigger quantity. And then when that doesn't happen, we feel this standard of quantity overwhelm us. And we say, oh, I'm such a failure at prayer. I'm such a failure at this, what should just come so easy. I'm such a failure at it. And let's, let's even talk about the Bible. 
Because I don't know what y'all do here with Bible reading, but I, I stopped doing the yearly Bible reading thing. I'm not doing it. You can do it if your pastor says to do it. Then just edit this out of the, the eight track tonight. I'm just kidding. I stopped doing the yearly Bible reading. Why? Because, boy, Genesis starts out great. Woo! In the beginning, God! All kinds of awesome creation, right? And then Exodus, woo! They're getting out of Egypt. And then comes Leviticus. You can get through Leviticus. And then comes Numbers. Dear Lord. Genealogies. You're sitting there like, such and such. And, and you're snorting and slobbering all over yourself because you're falling asleep at 5.30 in the morning reading genealogies, trying to push through so you can get that beautiful check mark on your little car. Right? You know what I'm talking about. That check mark. Ooh, that check mark feels so good. And I, I read it and I'm through it. But did it do anything for you? I had somebody tell me, Pastor, I, I read five chapters yesterday and I said, What did what'd you learn? Uh, uh. I stopped. I stopped overlaying guilt. On an area that's so vital to our lifeblood. Yeah. So vital to our lifeblood. Paul said, pray without ceasing. How, how is that? How is that supposed to be? There's a spirit connection all the time. That doesn't look like what we've formulated. Sure, there's a position of prayer. Sure, there's kneeling and there's humbling. But, but there is a connection that happens in the spirit. And when we don't even know how to pray. The Bible says the spirit yes. makes utterances within us. Yes. When we don't even know what to pray. Yes. That, there's that connection that prayer can happen. Yes. Can I tell you. And you can write this down. And, and I don't know if I made this up or whatever. But we will never grow by guilt. Yes. But the Bible tells us we grow in grace. Yes. Yes. We grow in grace. We don't grow by guilt. And so I've come tonight to tell somebody to remove the guilt off of what is and will be the most powerful moments of your life. Our entrance and connection to God should not be overlaid with guilt. You know what guilt is? Guilt says you have a consequence. There's a consequence you've done wrong. Yeah. The word condemnation means death, that you are condemned to some, some consequence. And the Bible says there is therefore now no condemnation. There is no sentence that's upon you. Amen to those who are where? In Christ. Hallelujah. How are we in Christ? We have the spirit of Christ within us. That's good. Hallelujah. There is no guilt. I've come to tell somebody today and to teach tonight that your connection with God needs to bust through the guilt of the enemy that would tell you you missed. You should just stop right now. You didn't do enough. You didn't have a big enough quantity of reading or of prayer time. And why should you go back and do it? You're not worthy. Am I talking to anybody here tonight? Because I'm certainly talking to myself. It's a daily thing that happens. But if we're not connected to the Spirit, it's death. I want to live. I want to live every day. I want to be whole every day. So that means somehow, some way, I've got to fight that war in my flesh and get to that very portal of, of that essence within me, of the Spirit man, to, to get connected to to the God that dwells within me and stir up the gift within me and yes. talk and walk with him. Yes. How? Okay. I really believe, I really believe there is a way when we strip off the word quantity. I think we should stop using the word quantity when it comes to prayer. Because with without quantity, you can't you can't quantify it and have a metric on it. Right. Sometimes I think we need to stop doing the check boxes because the Lord's doing the check boxes in my heart. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, need, I need to follow what the Lord is saying. And there's such redemption here. And I'm going to 
I, I'm, I'm going to show it to you. Uh, when, whenever you get up to pray, how many of you feel just this free, like you feel the breeze come in and everything just calms down and there's no distractions when you start <laughs> praying? Anybody? Anybody ever? <laughs> no, you're not going to get that. Distractions are Satan's enemy. Uh, Satan is the enemy and his, his weapons are the distractions of the attacks on our connection. If he can keep you from connection to the yeah. Spirit of God, all he has to do is keep you from connection, uh -huh. connecting to the Spirit of God, yes. and soon you will be connected by, by our sinful nature to right. the Spirit of the yeah, world right. once again. True. Soon, 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 soon. Colossians chapter 2 and verse 10 tells us that we're, we are complete in him. The only way we're going to be complete is in him. Yes. Amen. The only way we will be whole is in him. Yes. The only way your day will be complete in Him is if you start with Him. I want to show you something yes. here. I'm so excited that Cole had this. <laughs> I did this at my church. So I only have one guy here. But I want you to see this. Anybody know what this is? This is an hourglass. I don't know if it's an hourglass. It could be a 45-minute glass. <laughs> don't know. But what's happening? What's happening? There was... There, there was no sand at the bottom. What's happening there is the first that is pouring out from the funnel, that, that pinch point in, right in the middle, that first that is pouring out there is becoming the foundation of everything that comes after, right? And so it's important what happens at the first. It's important what first happened in this building. It's important before these walls ever were built that there was a first, yeah. that there was a foundation that was laid. Yeah. And while we look at this and, and we see our time, it is important for us, and here's where I think we can strip off the quantity, and I'm, I'm just going to be practical with you here. I believe we can strip off the quantity by just trying to meet one measure, and that is of our time, and that is the first. The principle of the first, that before I do anything in my day ever, before I pick up my phone, and listen, it is a battle, I know, because these things are, con they're so connected to us, right? Yeah. Before I get the spirit of Facebook on me, or Instagram, or social media on me, that first, which will filter the rest of my day, I will tell you, whatever happens first in your day filters the rest of your day. Yes. If you get up and you start flipping through all the reels, you're going to compare yourself with somebody else the rest of your day. That's right. If you look at the chaos of everybody's life or what everybody ate that yesterday, you're going to be thinking about what you want to eat and take a nice picture and put it on there, and it's going to filter the rest of your day because you're laying the foundation with the very first moments that are poured out of your day. That's good. That's good. Social media, what about, oh, well, I don't do social media, I do news. Well, that might even be worse right now. <laughs> I used to work for a news organization, a very large news organization, and I can tell you news is not news, it's entertainment. That's right. It's not, don't, don't get caught up in news, it's just entertainment, because they want your eyeballs, they want your clicks, right. they want... They want your time because it means ad revenue for them. That's right. Believe me, I know. But if you look at the news, your, your day is going to be spent worrying. Yeah. You lay a foundation there. You're going to connect to some sort of spirit in the morning. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And whatever spirit you connect to in the morning will inform the rest of your day. Mm. Right, right. You say, well, I just, uh, the, the first thing I do is I talk to the, the person that I love the most. Well... You know what? You're depending on somebody that is going to let you down. If you're depending on a friendship to start off your day, it's going to let you down. It's going to inform the rest of your day. Yeah. Whatever you do to start the day is what your spirit connects with. And it's going, it's going to get in and it's going, it's going to mess up the rest of your day. So what am I saying here today? If you want to be connected to the Spirit, take off the quantity, but just say, I'm aiming for the first. I'm aiming for the first. 
the first moments, yeah, get up and do some hygiene stuff, brush your teeth, please. Do all that stuff. <laughs> But, but a man, a, a dear brother taught me this, and I thought, this sounds so simple, but it's life transformative. I promise you this is life transformative. Before you, if, if you want to go get coffee just and sit there and drink your coffee, that's fine. But find a place, the first of your morning, the very first. You say, well, I'm going to be late for work. Let me tell you a principle of the Old Testament, and I, I'm, I'm going to speed through this principle of the Old Testament, they were to tithe of their fields for six years, and on the seventh year, it was to rest the field. And they said, on that sixth year, you're going to ask, what shall we eat on that seventh year? And the Lord said, I will command my blessing upon your crop, and it will bear three years, so that when you rest, there's going to be enough provision for you to get connected with the Lord, with me. And to, to give me the land back so that I can replenish the land. You say, well, I just don't have time before I go to work. Guess what? If you don't take time to rest, you're going to ask God to bless the mess after you're done with it. Lord, I got through this day. Can you just please bless it? Lord, I, I got another day tomorrow. Bless, bless the mess. But if you say, I'm going to, I'm going to take time every day. And I'm just the very first thing I do. I don't care what it is. I don't care if I'm late for work. Oh, man. Oh, am I really stepping on some toes here? <laughs> Whew. Is work more, more holy than our prayer? I'm going to connect with God. This is, the, this is the principle of connecting with the Spirit of God. This is the aim. Okay? Whatever time it takes me to connect with with the Spirit of God for this day, I'm going to sit here until it's done. It might be two minutes. It might be five minutes. It might be 30 minutes. But I'm here to connect with God, and I'm not doing anything else until I connect with God. Amen. Amen. I'm not going to do anything else until I connect with the Spirit of God. And you connect with the Spirit of God, you can pray without ceasing. It's, it's just going to come natural. Why? Because everything is going to look like the kingdom. Amen. Yeah. Everything's going to look like everything's going to look through the, the lens of the spirit and the filter yeah. of the spirit. Hallelujah. Don't you know that the first drips that come out of your coffee pot are, are, the, are the most potent? Why don't you give the, that first time to the Lord yeah. and say, I'm going to connect in the spirit. Amen. I'm not going to allow any other spirit in my life. I'm connecting to the spirit of God. Amen. I'm not going to let any other spirit manipulate my day. Did you know that over 200 times connecting in the morning is mentioned throughout scripture over 200 times in scripture. I don't have time to go through all of them, but you can look in Psalms. I want you to go look it up in the morning. Connecting with God in the morning. The Bible, the psalmist said, in the evening, I'll give you praise for your faithfulness through the, through the day. But in the early morning, my soul hungers and thirsts for you. And I'm going to connect with you. Praise God. And very lastly, I'm done here. I'm not used to preaching this short, but that's good. It's good. <laughs> James chapter 4. I want to, I want to read you something. You will give him your first. It will inform your kingdom service. Verse 13. It says, go to now. You say that today or tomorrow we will go into such a city. We're going into the city. And we're going to continue there a year. Everything's going to be great. We have a business plan. We're going to buy and sell and get gain. And here's what James said. Whereas ye know not what ye shall be on the morrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor, appeareth a little time, and then it vanisheth away. Here's what he says. He said, for you ought to say, for you ought to say, you ought to say, if the Lord will. Somebody say that with me. If the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. Hallelujah. But, re but now you rejoice in your boastings. All such rejoicing is evil. 
what he's saying is before you ever do a thing, you get a hold of God and you say, God, what do you think about this? God, what do you think about my day? God, what do you think about what's happened at my job? Lord, I need to connect with you. I need to, I need to feel that connection before I ever leave this house because I want to, I want to walk in the spirit. Because we live in the spirit. Let us walk in the spirit. Could you stand with me tonight? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. That that principle of first, Jesus pushed that principle of first. He didn't say. He said, when you go pray, go, go into your closet and pray. Do it in secret. Find a place. We call it a God chair in our house. Somebody tells us, call it a God chair. My boys have their own place. Go, go in your God chair. It's not God's chair. But that's where they connect with God every morning. Those boys get their Bibles. I'm so proud of these boys. They get their Bibles and they go connect with God. They'll go pray. And at the, at the end of the night, we'll get together in our little family service what did God speak to you? And, and some of the most powerful things coming out of the mouth of children, God spoke to them through the day or in that time of giving in the morning. I'm not asking you to pray more. I'm asking you to give your first. Yes. If you'll just give those first few moments, guess what? You're going to pray more. Right. You're going to connect with the Spirit more. Praise God. I'm praying tonight that God would lift the guilt off of somebody. And there is somebody in here that God wants to use in your day, but you've been, you've been under the guilt trip of what modern liturgical church has taught us. And we've taken out of the pages of the book that, that not even scriptural language. Get the guilt off yes. and get the grace on yes. because he wants to walk with you. Yes. He wants to walk with you. He wants to talk with you every day. And if you miss a day, he's going to be there the next day. He's not going to, he's not, he's not going to leave you or forsake you. He's going to be there the next day. And I promise you, somebody who's been frustrated in your life, somebody who's been, who's been struggling in your life and you've been working, trying to get it out of your feelings and, and trying to get your health right in your body and maybe it's going to get right. It's not going to get right until you get it right. In the spirit. Yes. 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 And until we get it right. First. In the spirit. We can't expect the rest of our day. To go in the spirit. Would you pray with me right now? I know we're right at time. Now's about time. But, but I think it's, it's high time. To get a hold of this. And say Lord. I want to.